Good morning, I am Carrie Biscalonis with Reset Brain and Body here for Mental Health Mondays. So today I wanna to talk to all of you that feel like a bad mom or an angry mom. And most of you know how that feels, that feeling like you have lost your patience, you're yelling all the time, you're frustrated all the time. Um, you just don't like your kids a lot of the time and this can be a really exhausting feeling because it can feel like you are a complete failure and it can feel like you are letting everyone down and also it can feel like wait a second I wanted to be a mom I wanted these kids and now I just feel like I'm not enjoying any of it and especially if you're a stay-at-home mom or even part-time stay-at-home it can feel really, really just almost degrading to yourself and your choices that you've made that you feel so misaligned. Wait, this is the life that I wanted. These are the kids that I wanted. And yet I'm mad all the time. I'm irritable. I'm, I'm mad at my kids, but I don't even know if I'm actually mad at them. So first, I just want to offer validation as always that you are so not alone if you've been feeling this way. I want to remind everyone once again that we are over a year into a global pandemic. So the expectations and the standards that you have for yourself cannot be normal. <laughs> they just can't. You know, the same in, in that we're looking at our children expecting them to behave normally. They behave in a way that is completely ignoring the fact that we have been living through collective trauma for over a year. I want you all to just offer yourself compassion and be gentle with yourselves and your kids first and foremost as these thoughts of I'm a bad mom, I'm an angry mom, I'm yelling at my kids all the time like whoa hold up, things are hard, you are stressed. There is no doubt that many of you that are experiencing this have been burning out and burning out by the fact that being a mom is already tough. Being a mom to little kids or kids that are arguing with each other is already tough, but then layer on everything that you've experienced this last year, both the collective experiences of every, everything, just everything in this last year, and then how individually your family has been impacted. Maybe you have someone that's been sick. Maybe your kid's schooling has been disrupted more than other people. Maybe someone in your family lost their job. Maybe your job changed. Maybe your house got too small or too big or mismanaged or financially. Things are hard. So just acknowledge the fact that this last year is stretching you beyond, beyond anywhere where you've ever had to go before. And so irritability is absolutely a sign of burnout and stress. So take stock. Are you actually just super, super stressed? Are you burned out? And offer yourself that compassion of like, whoa, yeah, actually, if I look back, like I'm losing my cool on my kids all the time and I feel like a failure and I feel like an angry mom and I feel like a bad mom because like, oh, I have been anxious about getting sick or getting a loved one sick for over a year. Or, oh, like I feel very overwhelmed by all the hurt and the heartache in the world. Or, oh, I have had no social outlets, so I've been scrolling so much. So I've been consuming so many bad things and, and things that are hard about the world that I'm feeling really cynical and negative. But beyond that, I want to address a couple things because this can be a very shared experience and I don't want to diminish the fact that, yeah, Sometimes we are angrier than maybe we should be with our children, but it's always because something underlying is going on. So you are not alone. There has been collective trauma. Think of yourself as a glass of water. You wake up in the morning. Where is your water level at? I've talked about this with you guys before, but checking in with yourself. Well, okay, I didn't sleep very well last night. Um, kid two was up in the middle of the night. I probably drank too much wine over the weekend or I had too many sweets or I ate too many takeout food. So I'm feeling kind of like sluggish and, 
and, and puffy and just not really myself. Um, I have a really, really busy day ahead, so I was kind of anxious about that in the middle of the night when I was up in the middle of the night and I couldn't go back to sleep. I don't really know what we're gonna eat for dinner tonight. Oh, and my in-laws are coming into town this weekend and I'm kind of stressed out about getting my house clean. Okay, so all of those things, which is just like kind of normal day-to-day -day things of being a mom can bring your water level to, I don't know, here, your chest. Okay, then layer on this last year, homeschooling your children, wearing a mask, decision fatigue of who you're gonna hang out with, what are you gonna do, how are you gonna entertain your children, who are your kids gonna be able to hang out with, who are you gonna get sick, are you gonna get sick, what's happening in the world? Where do you think your water goes after that? All of that stuff that you're just waking up with, unconsciously living with, I would say your water is probably to here. So, where do you have room when your kids are fighting or they're getting on your nerves or they're not listening to you, which is one of the most aggravating feelings in the entire world when you're repeating yourself and your kids are not doing what you're asking them to do. Where do you go? Where do you go? You boil over, you explode, you get angry, you have no space. So mama, Check in with yourself. How much capacity do you really have before you boil over right now? I would wager that you have maybe a couple inches. So no wonder you're losing your cool a lot more. Now, what do we do about this? Okay, there are things we cannot control. We cannot control so many things right now in the world. One of my very best friends told me this analogy and I need to practice it more, but she talks about how we all are juggling a lot of balls. But there are glass balls and there are plastic balls that we're juggling in the air. And you can decide which ones are the glass balls. Um, the things that are really important to you that if you were to drop that ball, they would break and they would shatter and it would be impossible to repair. Maybe things like your marriage or your partnership. Maybe it's your career, your job. Maybe it's the relationship with your kids or your best friend. Maybe it's your health. That if you dropped that ball, there's no going back. There's no picking it back up. Things would be really, really, really hard. And then there's the plastic balls. And maybe the plastic balls are things like cooking dinner, eating organic, um, getting nine hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep a night, whereas a glass ball might be getting six hours of sleep. Maybe a plastic ball is your job, responding to emails timely, timely, whatever the heck that means. Maybe it's your kids getting straight A's. Maybe that's a plastic ball. Maybe um, clothes or your appearance or doing the dishes or getting the laundry done or or maybe it's your relationships. Maybe there's certain relationships that are actually plastic balls. But we have to take stock of not only, okay, how much capacity do I have for just like everyday life, lay it on top of all of the crazy stuff this last year, but then of the balls that I'm juggling, so I'm juggling a ton, which ones cannot be broken? And which ones could bounce if they fell? Maybe they'd roll away for a little bit, but I get it back. Nothing would be broken. Nothing would be shattered. Nothing would be irreparable. We have to determine that. And then we have to set our boundaries and say, you know what, actually, I know for me personally, my health is one that if that glass ball shatters, I, I can't do anything. I can't be available for anyone. And yet all of maybe the plastic balls that support the glass ball of my health, I feel like I can drop and move and it's okay and everything will be fine. But I didn't realize that the plastic balls kind of support the glass ball of just my overall health setting boundaries, what is actually non-negotiable. Because the thing is, if I manage my water level so that when I wake up, oh, I've processed through my trauma because I'm going to therapy weekly, or I've worked through the residual stress that I carry every day because I'm making sure that I'm working out or getting a walk-in or I'm meditating or I'm yelling into my car and punching a pillow at night. If I and not drinking my feelings and instead drinking water and feeling like I'm nourishing myself, maybe all of those things can start to lower my water so that I have more capacity to be a little bit calmer 
when my kids are driving me absolutely nuts. Because that's inevitable, right? Like we can't just think that we're gonna snap our fingers and all of a sudden our kids are gonna listen to us. That, that is a constant. That is something that is just something we have to accept. And a lot of times we have to accept whatever chapter we're in, right? We have to accept that we have small children that need us. We have to accept that we have kids that are potty training. We have to accept the kids that are still in the newborn age and waking up multiple times throughout the night. We have to accept the ones that are struggling with puberty and emotions and they need us so much and they need us to just sit down next to them and talk. We have to accept whatever chapter we're in. And then we have to figure out within ourselves, well, how will I show up for this chapter so that no glass balls fall and break and shatter and are irreparable. Setting boundaries is one of the most important things that we can do, saying no. Saying no to that wedding in June that's already causing you stress. Saying no to that bachelorette party. Saying no to visitors that now want to come in town, but you don't really know if you want them to come in town because they don't wear their masks and they were just in Florida. No judgment, but I'm just saying some of us (laughs) are practicing Where to say no? We also have to accept that we will make people unhappy. You will always be disappointing people. But who you have to recognize that you can't disappoint is yourself. That has to be non-negotiable. People will always be bummed out when you set boundaries because of the way it will impact them. You won't be available for them. You know, your husband maybe won't get that home-cooked meal tonight. Or your sister won't get that phone call this week. Okay. But the ones that really truly are there for you and care about you and love you and support you will need you to take care of you. Will need you to figure out ways to lower your water so that you can be the mom that you want to be more often. No one can tell you. I can't tell you what are the best ways for you to do this? There aren't quick tips because a lot of times it's reprioritizing our life. It's getting real about our people pleasing and our nurturing and our need to take care of other people and our need to be needed. It's figuring out how to be uncomfortable with letting people down, figuring out what we can control and what we can't control and letting it go. None of this is a quick fix. This is a process, especially if you have been taught by other people or been drinking the Kool-Aid of society that you need to do more and be more and be the best and be more available. If you're comparing yourself to other people on social media, all of these things you have to just filter through and get to the truth of, okay, what are my glass balls and what are my plastic balls? What will lower my water so that when my kids are aggravating me, I don't lose my cool. I'm able to, because I have space. I have more than a couple inches. I have space. So if you were looking for the answer, I don't have it this week. But it's something that we just need to remember that this is just the work as a human, whether you're a mom or not. So I wish you all good luck, being kind and gentle to yourself, being compassionate. And if you have a minute, take stock. All right, take stock of where your water is. What are you carrying every single day on top of just whatever is coming up for you that day? And where can you recalibrate those plastic balls that are okay dropping and those glass balls that cannot drop? Thanks so much.